down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors. Experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Bang, bang, you tuned in to the what? To the Savvy Radio Show. This is your friend, Bang, 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 Steve Van Kalenberg. Doing it good, doing it big, doing it every day. Working hard just like you. Sweating biscuits out there. It's hot. When is the fall going to get here? I'm ready. Football, fun, having a good time, thinking about the future. One thing you need to be thinking about, really, really, really wealthy people think 10 years, 20 years, 100 years ahead. Legacy, transactions, generational, pass down of wealth. I'm just telling you, that's just a suggestion. What are you going to do with this asset? Where is it going to go? How long are you going to keep it? Now, things change, but the reality is the decisions that you make, they should be based on a different mindset. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Today's episode is on inspections. Yes, just a couple episodes ago, I did Wade from No Place Like Home Inspections. He came on the radio show. We had a good chat. I said on the radio show, I'm going to hire this dude. I did. And he came out and did the inspection. Hey, how you like me? I also think I said on the podcast that I would do a follow-up podcast of my experience and all that fun jazz. Well, anyway, I got the inspection done. And here is the reasons why I think you should do an inspection. Number one, for negotiation positioning, you can reduce the price. You're in a position, you have a legal bona fide document that says these things are wrong with the property, and now you can work from a basis point, all right? Number two, I use an inspection company for liability purposes. One, you know, I did an inspection and this was it was not obvious or this didn't happen. I have some legal document, again, liability issues, ready to go if I ever get into some kind of deep SH. You hear me? Number three, I want to know what's immediate. What's going on? How do I address this situation? Number four, a lot of things pop up that I didn't realize that will be, and I'll tell you those here in a minute, and I I probably should have broke down this podcast. I'm going willy-nilly out here. Just dropping the knowledge as much as I can to help you so you don't fail where I have failed, which is not having an inspection in before. But another reason why I like inspections is that I can gather what I need to do for CapEx for future. Again, rich people, like I said in the beginning, wealthy people, whatever you want to call them, they don't think like 12 months from now. They don't think 24 months from now. They're thinking five years from now, 10 years from now. I was talking to a dude today. He's got a 34,000 square foot facility, building, warehouse, whatever you want to call it. And we're working together on this project. How how much should I save for a roof? And roofs are 300,000 to 500,000. And which is the better roof should I do? And again, I said to the homeboy that we're working together, I was like, yo, where is this going? Is this an asset that's in a path to progress? Is this an asset that you would sell? And could you, you know, there's a bunch of scenarios in there, and that's on another episode. But number five, legal documentation. I actually mentioned that five times here, so let's let's re-go over these again. My five top reasons are negotiating the price, ability to reduce. I got a physical document piece of paper. Liability of protection. Also, When I resell this property, and you will resell stuff, now you have some sort of a tangible thing that these these issues, these concerns weren't an issue back when I purchased the property because I have legal documentation. Immediate issues, number three, that I need to jump on right now. Number four, it helps me plan for CapEx. And number five, legal documentation. Now, here's some whys that I wrote down. Another set of eyes, E-Y-E, 
if you've listened to any of my podcasts for the last seven years, I'm like, always have another set of eyes. The great thing is when you pay for another set of eyes, you get a little bit more service. So that's another reason. You can call that number six if you like. My other why is a different perspective. The way I think, I thought this inspection was off the chain for a lot of reasons. And, and it's just interesting because I actually got the report, sat down with a newbie, and I sat down with a kind of a pseudo veteran. And then I made a phone call to another veteran. And, you know, that's why I, a lot, one of the guys was like, that's why I don't do inspections. It wasn't some groundbreaking inspection where my life has changed. <laughs> But it did bring perspective. One, I cultivated a relationship with the inspector. One, that may, that may yield the deal. Two, he brought some things to my attention. I know darn well I would have not figured out or mitigated against if he did not crawl into the attic, pointed to a hole where these bugs were coming in, which were building nests, which this little two-inch hole caused a leak in the exterior which I thought the roof was leaking, and no, it wasn't. It was a hole on the side where these animals were coming in or whatever. The rain was coming in. Different perspective. I'm just letting you know right now, another reason, another why, is this is how we do business. This is just how I do business from here on it. This inspection was 600 bucks, and I think it was the best 600 bucks. I have legal documents. I have a different perspective. And this is just how, it's just a cost to do in business. And I'm telling you, it's going to help you in the long run. Trust me. And another one is it's out of state. If you're out of state and you're trying to buy an asset, which I have been trying to do and I bought in several states, this is the thing you should do is definitely hire an inspector because the seller will tell you or sell you a bill of goods that may not be accurate, but you can verify those things. You can also ask to send, well, you can send this, um, to the seller. And I've already sent this to the seller on this acquisition that I'm buying. Now, after I, I had a great experience with the individual at the inspection, the guy that did it, his name was Wade. You need to check him out. Number two, um, <clears throat> I went through the inspection and there's some things that popped up. One, where was the camera lines? And I called the guy and he's like, yep, I'm about to go back out there and do it. Boom. I asked him about some weeping holes and something. He clarified that. Boom. There's a couple things that he brought up. One was the AC breakers, air conditioning breakers, the condensers, which I was a little confused on. It said AC breakers are oversized for the unit. And I was like, what does that mean? And AC, I thought it was like AC, DC, like power. And I'm like, what breakers on what? He was talking about the condensers on the outside. But it was great to have a conversation with him because he broke me down. And they're oversized, and we had a conversation on that. Cool. During my inspection, he was like, should I test the water? I'm like, absolutely, test the water. Now, if you're a cheap investor, you're like, well, how much does it cost to test the water? Well, let me tell you this. It doesn't matter what it costs because it could save you. If that water is contaminated, and this is a commercial facility that hosts events, if someone gets sick on the water, what happens to your business? And so if you have documentation of this inspection of testing the water, so I was like, yeah, homeboy, test the water. And through that process, getting the water tested, finding no contaminants, and the reason why we didn't find contaminants, because there was a chlorinator or chlorineator, some nader, bader, freaking feel like, um, you know, whatever that TV show. Anyway, um, it there's a chlorinator on the well that is cleaned and through this inspection this is where it's worth the six hundred dollars is because through the due diligence and beating up the seller trying to get to the bottom of every single detail why do you do this why do, why you know on one side of the building the the um the gutters were piped under the ground but on the other side of the property which would be the west side of the property the gutters are not piped into the ground. They just go into the, under the grass, which eventually seeps into under the building. Fascinating. Like, why would you do that on one side? And why wouldn't you do it on the other side? Just very interesting. So this, again, I learned that. But what I learned through this whole process is that as a commercial building with 
public access to a bathroom that people drink the water, right? C- pretty much every commercial building. Well, this per- commercial building is on a well, and it turned out that you have to, through my due diligence, trying to do this right, you have to test the water and send it to the DDQ every quarter. So it's $30, no big deal, but every corner, every quarter, the month, you have to send it to DDQ that you tested the water. Interesting. Now, we did not test if it's contaminant contaminants before the well because is the well, we know for sure that at the well, after the chlorinator cleans it, whatever it does, it's it passes the test on the end result. So, but again, I have this in writing. Cool, huh? So this is just some things, you know, people get like, man, I, you know, I, I love it. <laughs> I know your skill set in your level of an investor, how serious you are when you complain and say, I don't get an inspection because it's $200. I'm telling you. Now, when I was talking to a zillionaire the other day about inspections, and he's like, 600 bucks to do an inspection? That's too cheap. And I almost didn't believe it either. And I was like, yeah, the guy scopes the lines too. Just to scope the lines normally is about $200 to hire a plumber to come out there and do that. Now, I don't know how sophisticated this inspector's camera is, and I haven't gotten that full report. When I do, maybe we'll talk about it. But the reality is all these things that you must go through make you a better person, right? I mean, everything the inspector has done, I mean, I've looked at probably several hundred houses in my lifetime as an investor. I mean, I've acquired several hundred, but I'm just saying the reality is I learned something new on this commercial property that I have to test the water every four quarter, every quarter, four times a year. That was worth $600 to me. That's a great lesson because check this out. If I did not test this water ever, if I didn't know about this DDQ, now the seller could have told me this and, you know, I would have been down the road, but let's just say the seller was disgruntled, which the seller is kind of different and unique and he's very, uh, I don't want to say it on the radio show, but he's not easy. He's not a fun guy. And he could not tell me that. Like we barely, when I was doing the inspection, oh, there's an outhouse. Oh, there's a well. Oh, there's a blank. There's a lagoon. Well, oh, ooh. Ah, I didn't know this, right? He could just skim over the chlorinator and not tell me. He mentioned it, but he didn't tell me when we were going over the inspection that it needed to be tested every quarter. What if I didn't know that? If the inspector didn't tell me that, that's why I think it's worth 600. And someone did drink the water and I didn't put the chlorinate, chlorine, chlorine, whatever the frick it is in there. And it wasn't testing right. And someone got sick. What would happen to my business? It would crash and burn. It would be on News 9. Someone gets sick at this venue, and no one wants to go there again. You've got to do your due diligence. If <clears throat> I'm telling you, even though I've been in the game 23 years, I've done, a, you know, I don't know how many acquisitions, still hire an inspector. So I know your skill set when you don't hire an inspector because you think $200 is expensive. I think $600 for a $1.3 million acquisition that I'm doing, I think $600 is well worth the money well spent. All right. So anyway, let's go over this inspection report. So the dude sends the inspection report. He's got this really cool slick software. It was actually too slick for me to look at. So I actually downloaded the PDF. That's how I usually get inspections. 33 page PDF. We're going to crank through this really fast. He gives me a summary, which is legit on this software where I can click a button and it's like exterior evaluation repairs needed recalk. Seriously, the guy showed me everywhere, every photo. I, I'm curious to see how many photos are in here. He goes into inspection details. Some of this stuff was just general information and general disclaimers, like all recommendations, evaluations, repairs should be done before closing. We do not verify floor plans or permits. I mean, all this stuff is to protect the inspector. I get it. He doesn't want to get sued. Now, most inspectors probably have insurance, the good ones. Now, I know in the state of Oklahoma, you got to have a license to be inspector probably an engineer type and definitely an, a, a detailed individual. But, you know, I've always thought about in, going to inspection school just to learn the skill. Uh, he, you know, it tells me the grade. So, you know, if I was trying to buy this asset, say I was really busy, I mean, all the details that I would need to make a sound decision are in here. The really cool thing, the very first photo that pops up is a photo, is a, something that I pointed. It was the manufacturer of the building. This, this building is 
a metal building that has been converted into a venue. And I would really want to know who actually manufactured the building, which I got the permits before closing. And I hired an attorney for this acquisition. So there's all kinds of crazy deals going on here. But and a lot of moving parts. But the reality is, I want to know the builder. Is he still in business? And he is. I was like, cool. And so there's a lot of things that I learned through the process. Yes, the driveway is partially gravel. I found out from the seller. This is some FYI that we have to grade it every once in a while. Interesting. So that's CapEx. Going through this inspection, why I was on the inspection, why I was on the property, I was looking at the driveway or the where the parking is. And why is it gravel? Why not blacktop? And there was there was so many reasons. All this I learned just by being present at the inspection. So you, Mr. Savvy investor out there, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do inspection, Van Kallenberg. You're right, $200 for a ghetto uh, residential inspection for an investor grade and 600 maybe for a cheaper grade commercial, whatever. Here's the deal. Just being on the property and having, again, like I said earlier, having the perspective or someone else's perspective is just shedding a whole bunch of light for me. That's how I, you know, he would point out another photo. The underground drain was a little collapsed. Yep, the connection from the spout to the underground was damaged. Boom, definitely. Needed to know that, that which led into another conversation of, when I asked the seller on the other side, are these connected? And he said, no. See, if I did not have an inspector, I probably wouldn't have looked at the downspouts. I probably would have been a little too emotional because I was really intrigued about the well and the lagoon and the driveway and 20 other things that were running through my flipping mind. Uh, it was like, whoa. He pointed out all the caulking that needed to be done. I'm like, I know that. All the caulk, whatever you want to call it, caulk, 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 whatever, you know, C-A-U, you know, it was good. I mean, the stuff that I already saw when I was there, but the great thing is, is that he put a bunch of arrows on these photos, and I get to send this, now I got this document, hey, seller, you need to fix this stuff. Now, I'm buying the property as is, so, and the guy that I'm dealing with purchasing this property, he is not real fun to work with, but I don't have to talk to you. I could just send you this document. And how are you going to tr try? You know, I'm definitely going to say something about it. Now, I'm going to purchase the property regardless. You know, if I can get a few thousand dollars off the price, hey, I'm definitely going to hire a handyman. And I'm definitely going to have to get these things uh, corrected. Uh, you, you know, even put pictures of the brush. It was really good. Vegetation is too close to the exterior. Man, I tell my tenants that every day. Uh, certain areas, exterior, were damaged. She pointed out some holes. I didn't even see those holes. He pointed out the bird's nest that was in the attic or, or, or the insect nest. Thought that was really cool. So he even took pictures of the gap of the door. Great for Section 8. I mean, have, have you ever had Section 8 or ran a bunch of Section 8 properties? You cannot have daylight showing anywhere. I mean, shoot, if I paid this dude uh, a couple hundred bucks to do an inspection, a pre-Section 8 inspection, I wonder how much my ROI would be not failing an inspection. I don't do Section 8 no more, but back in the day, I was doing a whole bunch of Section 8, and it was a whole bunch of waste of time. Hurry up and get an inspector out there, and then they would freaking flag me because I didn't have this or there was that, and it was. Just, and then I had to wait two more weeks. How much money did I lose? What if I had this type of guy out there? Man, my life would have been changed. Woo, all right. I mean, he, he pointed out another thing that was interesting. He pointed out dirt washed out under the concrete pad for the condenser. Interesting. The dirt under the AC pad is partially washed out. Recommended properly putting the dirt under the pad and directly water under and directly uh, uh, under the blah, 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 whatever. Uh, show pointed out a bunch of water damage. Of course, a lot of this stuff was um, how the building was built. Some of the little weird things. The roof. Uh you know, it's kind of scary. It's like roof ventilation, no lower vents, no upper vents. That's interesting. I didn't know that. That's kind of something that, that I slipped by my thing. Like, it has to have vents. There's got to be somewhere. How is it being ventilated? Um, he did point out a hole in some metal building. We pointed that out. We've already got that fixed, or we, we required the seller to fix that. So it's just interesting. Downspouts were not connected. They were too tight to the building. He made that. Lack of insulation, which is really weird. He took a picture of a room. I don't even know how he got into this room on the back side, but it was there's interesting. It's, it's 16 center studs. And on those, he they're missing. It's like every other 16 inch stud is missing R15 roll insulation or R10 or whatever the frick it is. 
interesting. He goes, there's a minimal amount of insulation, a part of the attic, or is on top of the attic. Boom. Holes in the roof. There were multiple holes in the roof where the AC lines go inside. Professional roofer evaluate and repair as needed. You know, of course, this guy has this, this inspector has a lot of, uh, you know, disclaimers not to say it's his fault, right? Uh, the plumbing, he tested the plumbing, uh, you know, nothing major. He said the supply lines are plastic slash co- copper. Which one is it? The water source is well and septic. Uh, he says the plumbing drain pipes are cast iron and plastic. Again, I guess he just covers himself because the clean out that pops out is plastic PVC. He goes, there's a water filter, cool present 30, ga- you know, 30 gallon water tank. He also put in here that the water tank wobbled. I'm like, wow. I mean, you like, you like wobble with me, <laughs> you know, you like, like stand next to the, to the water heater and shake it. See if it's a wobble wobble with me. I mean, I was like, he has it in here. I thought that was a very interesting, um, you know, his re- recommendations, the water heater is near its end of his life, uh, budgeting for replacement. Again, a lot of this verbiage is great for getting, uh, to re-trade or re- renegotiate. Hey, this water heater is 10 years old, you know, what's the what's the end of the year life of of anything right when it breaks but how can you predict that you mean 20 years yeah the water heater wobbles recommend properly securing it interesting and then the electrical he went into the electrical this is where i had some questions he saw some uh, empty slots in the panel which i just got dinged on, on my apartment building just recently I had an inspection for the insurance and there, one of the breaker boxes had holes in them. You know, there, it needs to have like a dummy plate. Didn't have it in there. The insurance guy dinging for that. So I had to get that done. I had to hire a professional electrician to come out there to put the cover of these two boxes. He pointed that out. Uh, Wade did pointed that in this inspection. I was like, that's smart. These are little things. You know, if, if you're emotional, I'm telling you, you got to get an inspection. And I'm, I'm not selling Wade, right? I barely know the guy. I just li- recently met him. But I can just tell you my game as a real estate investor has elevated because of these things, because I am trying to be better. I'm getting my mindset is different than it was. And it's just good to dial back in. And the things that he brings up are the things that I have been dealing with just recently on a lot of my commercial properties. Come on. Uh, He said one of the GFIs is, is tripping and resetting. Uh, where it's outside he has a picture of it another thing that was interesting too there's a there are some tripped breakers uh, in the panel boom look at that there's the knockouts are missing i mean he, he you know there's some exposed wire he also found some wire in the hvac system that was very bizarre that kind of irked me when i was there doing the inspection the drain pan was full it was getting full because it needed to be cleaned out the hvac people were on their way but there was a Romex wire running across under the furnace in the drip pan, in the water. Come on. That's, come on. That is like a, let's get zappity tap, zappy zap. We're going to get electrical shock. So he, uh, we, we, they rectified that right there. They, they I was like, hey, we, you're going to have to get on that right now, seller, and get that ball rolling ASAP Ricky. Uh, it was just interesting. You know, he has some disclaimers like he couldn't get to the furnace box. He had took pictures of it. He, the great thing is, is that he took pictures of the condensers. I know all the model numbers, serial numbers, the tonnage. Uh, you know, again, he did throw something out here, like I said earlier, about the AC, which is the breaker boxes were, um, the breaker boxes were oversized. The breaker itself, and I went and called an HVAC guy to verify because he put a five ton on this inspection. This is a five ton. And then when I, the seller was telling us that it was a six ton unit, well, and I can't see the tonnage on the marquee on the back, the, the, the identification, the placard. So I called the HVAC unit guy, a good baller friend of mine. I was like, yo, how do I find out what actual tonnage it is and the BTUs? And, and he told me exactly how to do it. It's in the serial number. And if the serial number says 60, then it's five ton. And it was. And so we figured that out. And so it, it, it was a good, he, of course, I saw this too. The filters were dirty. They needed to be changed. Um, he, he gave me some great suggestions. I'm telling you right now, it was, it was a great opportunity. Also, 
he took some pictures of the septic system, which I was there on the inspection. And again, when I was there on the inspection, I was already going to buy the property. I'm already moving forward on the transaction. And he has some pictures of the whole septic system that I didn't even see when I was there because I was so busy negotiating with the seller and really trying to find the nuances of the property so I can run this facility efficiently as possible for the next tenant that's coming. And it was really good. It was a great opportunity for me. I'm definitely going to hire this guy again. Um, I called him on some questions. He called me right back. I asked him. So and he just he just brought a lot of things to light. One of the things was interesting too. The the um, I you know I have this problem on another building. I have some sprinklers in it where the fire extinguishers were out of date. They were 2016, 2017. Like the fire code, the the tagging. And in the state of Oklahoma, they need to be updated every year. He took some pictures. Now I got some history. And and, and I just, it was well worth the opportunity and the time. And I appreciate him and the gift that he has in his business. So, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this was a podcast that shed some light or maybe some insecurities. Yes, many years I have done a lot of acquisitions without inspections. But if you want to go to the next level and you want to be the very best investor, I definitely recommend, even if you're still training and learning, it's worth it. You can learn a ton. Now, you're really experienced. Maybe you've done a thousand transactions. I don't know. And you're a builder. Maybe you could see it. But I'm telling you, I've done, I probably walked through almost 500, maybe a thousand units in my lifetime. And I always miss something. So it's always worth to have another person on your team fighting for you, giving you uh, the best service possible. And I think Wade did a great job. Check him out. No place like home. If you have any questions, if you uh, if this inspired you in some way or did I leave something out, you want to correct me because I do everything <laughs> wild, man, shoot me an email, shoot me a text message, go to SavvyInvestors.com, Savvy Podcast, and uh, let your boy know coming up in 2023, we are rolling out an amazing group. So if you're interested and you want to go to the next level, remember these these words, Advanced Investor Alliance, AIA, Advanced Investor Alliance. Uh, the team is assembled. We are rolling out 2023. It's going to be beautiful if you're interested and you, you've been an investor for a while, for at least two years, you got some assets and you want to go to the next level. What is that? commercial, build your portfolio, freedom, man, that's coming down the pipe. We're working, we've been working all year. 2022 has been a great year of building this new platform that we're rolling out called Advanced Investor Alliance. You can go check it out, advancedinvestoralliance.com. You can sign up uh, and be on the list uh, for what's coming great that's coming nationwide, not only in Oklahoma City, it's going to be hot physically, but uh, virtually as well. Anyway, my name is Steven Van Kallenberg. It's been a pleasure just chatting with you. Hopefully you're doing well, and let's connect somewhere, somehow, someday. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 